Welcome back to episode 14 of Creator Conversations, where I have the pleasure of interviewing and just having a conversation with some of the most influential content creators here in this personal finance and credit card niche we find ourselves in. In our last episode, I got the chance to talk to a friend of mine, Chad's Money Minutes, about his strategy for applying for a new credit card every single month, how he's been able to beat Chase 524 in the past, his love for the Amex Platinum card and how much value it gives him personally, his unique YouTube journey as somebody that really loved the live streaming side of YouTube on top of his normal content, and and of course, even more than that. And in today's episode, my guest is somebody that you'll see commenting on every single credit card creator's content, that being CJ. We discuss things like our thoughts on how to become successful in the credit card game from your very first credit card, the ever-growing debate of the Amex Gold versus Amex Rose Gold cards, his overall credit card setup and how ours are very similar in a lot of ways, his journey with YouTube so far, and of course, much more. And real quick, before we get into it, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video and just check below if you're subscribed, because I really do enjoy putting out this free content to y'all and while it does cost me money and time to produce even just a super simple thing like leaving a like and subscribing to the channel truly does help me out a ton and with all of that being said i hope y'all enjoy this one as much as i did so without further ado i'd love to welcome in cj to our conversation here today cj how's it going hey i'm good what's up everybody thank you so much spencer for having me on today i'm excited to get started with this yeah little bit of a creator's conversation itself so. yeah it's fun i'm glad that i could be here and doing it in person you know that's my favorite way to do it so i appreciate you having me into your actual studio setup <laughs> right right i feel pretty honored welcome to the big blue couch man with yeah. all of my pillows so yeah spencer isn't overwhelmed at all with the amount of pillows like <laughs> no it's perfect. that's a that's a total lie he like pushed all of them off to the side so there's that <laughs> yeah off to a great start but um but yeah of course everybody that watches both of our channels mainly going to be focused on the credit card side of things. So I like to start off by asking everybody if they can kind of just tell me a little bit more about, you know, your general credit card strategy, you know, whether you're on team travel, team cashback, no annual fees, annual fees, like kind of just how you approach the credit card game. All right. No problem with me in particular. Um, it's very interesting because when I started with the credit card game, it wasn't really to be in the credit card game. I know I needed a credit card. And it was because my sister told me, hey, you live in America, you need to get credit. Yeah. So if you want an apartment, you want a car, you want a house one day, you need to have some sort of credit. So I'm like, okay, fine, I'll go ahead and get a credit card. And back then I just wanted to get a credit card. Yeah. If you have no credit, it's hard to get a credit card and get approved. So I went with a few of the banks that I banked with, which were two banks at the time, and they both denied me. I thought it would be approved because, hey, I have a savings account with these banks. They can see I'm responsible, never overdraft on my um, checking accounts or anything. Nope, I got declined. And eventually I went over to Discover, which Discover was my first choice, but it ended up being a really good choice. And at that moment, I decided, I guess, that I was on Team Cashback. Back then, I didn't know it was Team Cashback or Team Travel. I didn't even know if there were credit cards with points for travel back then because right. we're talking just over a decade ago. So yeah. kind of aging myself a little bit. But <laughs> but back then, I knew that when I checked back on the Discover documents that that card had just recently come out earlier that year, the Discovery mm -hmm. Cashback card. I guess they may have revamped it or yeah. I don't know what exactly they did. So I was very lucky and fortunate to go with that particular credit card. And I was satisfied with it for five years yeah a total of five years just getting that five percent cash back within those category spends every quarter and one percent back on everything and i thought i hit the jackpot i was super happy yeah always getting some cash back and i was in college for a little bit of it but that was my start yeah and then 2020 came around and that's when i learned differently so yeah. before 2020 like i think in 2018 i got the chase freedom unlimited so that was my setup, Discovery Cashback, Chase Freedom Unlimited. Yep. I'm getting 1.5%, no longer getting 1% on everything like I yep. did for the past five years at that point. And then I learned 2020 about travel and the Chase Sapphire Preferred. And it was at that point when this Sapphire Preferred had an elevated offer for 80,000 ultimate reward points. And I was still struggling with, do I pay an annual fee to be able to travel or do I stick with Team Cashback? Right. Like, I couldn't get my head around paying an annual fee just to hold a credit card until all those videos started coming out about, oh, the, the um, welcome offer, the staff I preferred, it's elevated, so this is a good time, and this is what you can do with it. And then I learned that I was losing value. Mm. And that's what got me over to team travel. So what happened, <laughs> I actually redeemed a lot of my points from my Chase Freedom Unlimited. I had over 40,000 points, so I got the 15,000 sign-up bonus. 
plus all of my spend over the years if I apply for the stuff I preferred. I redeemed those points to buy a piece of furniture. Nice. Well, just over 40,000 points. Well, that's an expensive <laughs> piece of furniture for chase points, but. And it was, it was a nightstand at that. So it was like a one night stand for 400. Yeah. yeah. Right? Hopefully YouTube doesn't censor this video, but <laughs> yeah. it was a bedroom nightstand yeah. for over 400 bucks. And it's like, I spent over 40,000 points. And when I learned that, I'm like, holy crap, that could have yeah. been worth 800 plus, like at least 800 with two cents per point when the staff I preferred. Right. So since then, I went over to Teen Travel, got the elevated offer for 100,000 points. So I was like, okay, I can't miss it now. I have to do wow. it. And ever since then, I've been on team travel. Nice. Yeah, so I guess back then, you weren't probably plugged into the YouTube space at all. I guess when did that come into your credit card journey? Man, that's so hard to remember. Yeah. <laughs> so back then, who? I knew I watched a few people on YouTube. I was, every like, everyone in the finance space almost watched Graham Stephan. Right. I also watched um, Wealth, Hacker, Wealth Hacker Labs with Jeff Rose. I can't remember when I found um, Brian Jones. Yo, yeah. sorry if I'm messing up your name. Um, and who's the other guy? Oops, that's so bad. I have a picture with him. Like, who's the other guy? Yeah. <laughs> Ask Sevi. Yeah. So there were a few people around in that time. I remember Daniel Braun had kind of like just got started too. Okay. There was another guy who was doing YouTube videos. He isn't doing it anymore. But one of, the, one of them or a few of them brought me onto the staff I preferred. Okay. So, so it was about that time. Then. Yeah, around okay. 2020. That was a great time to get the preferred 100,000 points. I think when I applied, it was only at 60, but it is what it does. You win some, you lose some. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so, okay, that's cool. You started on, I think, on a path that most people generally will kind of start on. Like, whenever you get, get started in the credit card game, unless you were watching YouTube before you were, like, 18 and know right. about the credit cards you should get, I guess, everybody kind of starts with some kind of starter credit card in the Discover. Mm -hmm. It's one of those that a lot of people recommend, including myself, because it's just so straightforward, 5% cash back. But I guess on that same note, do you, I guess you still recommend people apply for the Discover It or would you say like getting the Chase cards first is the right approach to it? Or I guess, how do you feel about your start compared to what you would recommend others do? So that may be changing just a little bit. I still 100% um, recommend the Discover It cashback credit card, but Chase recently introduced the Chase Freedom Rise, right. which has like totally changed the game for beginners because back then, and I had an account with Chase um, back when I was applying for my first credit card. Gotcha. And I knew don't go with Chase because it was hard to get with Chase. Like, I actually was doing a little bit Googling on my laptop back then to figure out, since I got denied like twice, well, who do I go with for a credit card? And I just knew don't go with Chase because Chase wanted to see some good credit history. Yeah. So I still 100% recommend Discover if it's your very first credit card. Uh -huh. Because at that point, if you're concerned about 524, that's, that's going to be your first credit card. So you'll be at 124. Right. Um, but if you do, you can go with the Chase Freedom Rice. Um, I can't remember what their welcome offer. Maybe is it like a twenty-five dollars or something it's, like that? Yeah, something small, but at least gives you something. I guess right. it's not the cashback match though. That's insane. Right. Yeah. So Discover obviously has a cashback match, and if you're going to go with Discover as your first credit card, use the referral link. Yeah. So you can get that one hundred dollars statement credit. I think after you make one transaction on the card. Right. So that that's why I would recommend that particular card, and I think just the rotating reward categories would still net you better, especially with the cashback match, mm -hmm. rather than going with the Freedom Rise. But the Freedom Rise is still a really good credit card. Right. That way you're already beginning to build that relationship with Chase as well, especially since they seem to be a little bit more relaxed. Just a little bit, not too much. Yeah, so that's it's kind of interesting. So the way that I started my journey was the Chase mm -hmm. Freedom Student. That was the only way I could get into Chase. And honestly, I didn't know anything about the credit card game before that first card. I just had a friend also that was like, he actually worked for Chase. And he was like, hey, you should probably get a credit card at some point. My mom was like, yeah, you need to start building credit. Yeah. So I went in to get the Chase Freedom Student. Still had to wait. Like after I had, I had to have like a banking relationship with them for a little bit before they would even approve me for a Chase Freedom Student. That's interesting. But I went that route and it was like six months after I started, you know, with Chase. Mm -hmm. I got the Freedom mm -hmm. Student. And then I took it from there. I actually just ended up getting the Chase Trifecta right away. Oh, cool. So it was, it was pretty lucky that I went that route because I didn't learn about the Chase Trifecta or really much about the credit card game until probably after I got my Sapphire Preferred or right whenever I got it. It's kind of that same card where it's like, it's your first premium credit card, you know, it has right. an annual fee, it's metal, somewhat right. metal. And uh, so yeah, that's kind of what jump started me into it. And But I do recommend, like whenever I have friends that ask me what cards they should get, mm -hmm. you know, if you're in college and you, can't, you don't want to get a student credit card, which I think there are some great ones. Mm -hmm. I guess the Chase Freedom mm -hmm. Student's gone, but you have like the Saber mm -hmm. One Student on Capital One side's pretty good. 
Discover has a student credit card, but I hear maybe go with the Discover It instead. I don't right. know if you have an opinion on that, but. So it, it depends. If you're a student, I guess go with the go with the Discover student. It's yeah. the same thing. I think, and I only know this because I have another video coming out very shortly, but when I applied 10 years ago, yeah. the um, welcome offer was just the 0% intro APR, and that period was different. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it's the same now, but back then it was six months for the student card and 12 months mm -hmm. for the regular mm -hmm. cashback card. I'm not sure if it's the same. That was 10 years ago, and I haven't checked. Yeah. But I would say if you're a student, go for the student because it's literally the same thing. You have access to the same rotating right. reward calendar. Um, I would say still use the referral link. Um, and if if it so happens that you can't get the $100 statement credit because it's a student card, because I haven't checked, um, just try to go for the regular one so right. you can get that statement credit. And you can get pre-approved, I think, for the Discover It cash mm -hmm. back. Yeah. And also, I think the trick, the, what I was getting confused on is the Discover mm -hmm. It student does graduate up to the Discover It. Mm -hmm. But if you go the Discover mm -hmm. It secured, it only graduates up to like, a diff it's a different Discover card, like the Chrome or something like that. And it's not as good. It's like 2x back at restaurants and mm -hmm. gas stations. That stuff. part I don't really know. So <laughs> yeah, but something I guess to maybe research, but I think that's how it works. I think the student right. is a safe bet. But yeah, and I can confirm, I actually thought that I had the regular Discover It for a long time mm -hmm. uh, until I went back. <laughs> to 2013 and i can't wait for the video to come up but until i went back to 2013 and i saw the website there's a way you can look at the website oh, back in the past so i pull it up in that video and i see that they had the discover a student credit card i'm like mm. i guess they did go for the discover a student credit card okay because since they have all of my documents i went back and i looked to see what my intro zero percent apr the term that was for and it was a six months i'm like Dang, I think I've been telling everybody I went for the regular card this whole time. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so it did graduate up. As you know, I went from 1,000 of uh, credit limit all the way up to 32,000 yeah, over the years. So, Discover seems to be pretty pretty good about credit limit increases for the most part. I mean, yeah. some people have issues, but yeah, that's awesome. So your first credit card you kept for five years and then got your second one. So I guess yep. at what point of your journey did you start to increase that frequency at all like I, I, well, first how many credit cards do you have now maybe that's a good place to start so currently over wow there's almost an average of 10 anyway yeah so currently over the last 10 years of being in the credit card game i have a total of 10 credit okay. cards so that's like an average of one per year but i definitely didn't do one per year obviously okay. um when did it increase so the first one was five years then i went to the freedom mm -hmm. unlimited mm -hmm. and that was between the freedom unlimited and the staff mm -hmm. i preferred i know i think it was a year and a half or so, if I'm remembering oh. correctly. And then shortly after, a few months after that, I went for the Freedom Flex okay. to complete the trifecta. And then it was a good while, I think almost a year before I went and got my fourth credit card, which was the Amex Gold card. Okay. So yeah, you still, you have a pretty, I guess, like more lax approach to the credit card game. Like, you know, a lot of people, I talked to Chad in one of these and he's applying for his, he said his goal was a card a month. That's like his, it's still his goal. <laughs> yeah, no. And it's like, that's a lot. So I guess, can you explain maybe why your strategy is that like slower approach to it and how you found success in that compared to, you know, applying for one super frequently? I think the very interesting part about this is, and what makes this space unique is that everyone interjects their personality and moves based on their personality. Yeah. So with me, my personality, I'm a very careful, very cautious person. I move strategically and I move when I want to move and when I feel comfortable with moving. Yeah. So for that reason, I took some time with the credit card game. That's one answer. The second answer is since I took so long to get my second credit card and then my third credit card, I had all that credit history on one credit card with yeah. one account. So when I started opening up new credit cards, that actually impacted my credit score a whole lot more than people who had a whole, like a whole right. bunch of credit cards early on. So with me in particular, especially since I was pretty close to purchasing before the housing market went really crazy, I wanted to purchase a home or a condo, and I had to be very careful with what I was doing with my credit score. So it didn't happen exactly in this um, manner, but my credit score basically, when I applied for the Chase that I preferred, it had just went up to 802. Okay. Well, yeah. And by the time, like say, when I, got, I started shopping for loans in 21, so I think towards the end of 2020, I was somewhere around 750 in the credit okay. score. And that's because, I and I wasn't even opening that many um, credit cards, right? 
So that's just because of how much of an impact that had on my length of credit history, which is only, I think, 10% of your credit score. Yeah, 10 or 15%. But yeah, that's, see, that's an interesting point too, because yeah, you add one card to a, you know, credit profile with only one card on it for five years, you're going to take a big hit on that. And it does make a bigger difference than you think. Like, yep. I've never even been up to the 800s yet. I think all of my cards that I've added, I also have 10. And that was over the course of like two or so, two or three years. Mm -hmm. um, but my credit score has never probably been over like a 770. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, so obviously getting approved for cards. But if I would have just, if I just stop applying for cards, theoretically, my length yeah. of credit history is going to go up. I'll probably get up into the 800s. But yeah, I think that is one of those factors in the credit score that is a little bit like it can make or break you in a sense, but obviously right. it's just, it's a long-term game. And that's what I like about your approach is that you do not seem to be rushed by it. You know, I constantly have cards that I want to get, so I'm going to keep applying pretty frequently. Like, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. go to Chad's level, but well, maybe we'll never. <laughs> maybe you should know. do like Sledge's level or <laughs> Kelby showed me a stack of his cards the other day. I don't know if he's going to make a video. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. I like, I made him say, I said, Kelby, repeat after me. My name is Kelby and I am addicted to credit cards. <laughs> yeah. That's how many credit cards he had. I, my mind was blown. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's cool to see though, that you can be successful on both sides of it. Yeah. Like obviously like Chad and everybody else, they, they have really high credit scores or, you know, sharing it on their channel and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's cool that you can do those different approaches, but do you ever see yourself maybe picking that up or are you just going to continue to ride it out? I think it's going to continue at least at this point. Like, and I was thinking about this. I think at this point I'm going to continue to take it easy. Yeah. But like YouTubers like Chad and Sledge, they have families, they're married, they have yeah. kids. So it totally makes sense, right? When you have kids, your expenses go from here to here. It's like right. an exponential increase. So at that point, just knowing how much, I guess, sign up bonuses or welcome offers they can get with credit cards, I'll be looking for credit cards very frequently <laughs> once right. I start with a family or something along those lines. Yeah, that that's a great point. And one I was going to ask you about is like how how often do you think you're missing out on welcome bonuses? But I'm in the same boat where it's like, I'm already getting to my cap of like, mm -hmm. I can't get you know a ton of business cards, for example, because those spending requirements are so high right. for a welcome bonus. Like I can't yeah. spend $10,000 in three months, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen. But with a family, obviously you can. So mm -hmm. it sounds like you're on that same boat where you probably don't feel like you're missing out on a ton of value because you can't even necessarily hit those spending requirements anyway. And, and it has to make sense. Like yeah. the Amex Platinum, when it was at that 150,000 point offer with 200 or so yeah, or 20% back, whatever it was, I didn't even think about it. Mm. I'm like, I don't want, I want the Amex Platinum, like eventually, but that $695 annual fee, knowing that I don't travel very often. Yeah. I was like, no, this is, this is a no-go. Yeah. I know you were considering it and you tried it and you were in pop-up pop yeah. sale. Yeah, that was what happened with mine. It was the exact same offer. I was like, you know what? Because I think it was six thousand dollars in six months back then. So it was a thousand dollars a month. I was like, I can't hit that. Right. Um, and I'm obviously starting to travel a lot more. I just upgraded my preferred Sapphire preferred to the Sapphire Reserve, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because I didn't get the platinum back then. I wouldn't have both right now, obviously. But yeah, it, it those spending requirements now are even higher. Like on the platinum, I think it's eight thousand in six months for the base. Yeah. So yeah. It's like, which actually still isn't. It. That isn't too bad because that's what twelve. I think like twelve fifty a month or something like that. Yeah. Don't quote me on my math. It's yeah. like <laughs> I'm just doing this in my head really quickly. Not exact. Let's yeah. round up or round down, whichever works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, well that's cool. So now that we know your approach, we know what kind of cards you like. First of all, actually, I want to ask. So you are on the team travel side of things, but like you just said, you're not traveling super frequently. So Correct. how do you balance that? Like, is it going to be you know lower annual fee cards and mm -hmm. you know traveling less, or do you still get those premium travel credit cards, or how does that work for you? So, and this goes back to me being a little strategic, right? So I just opened up the Capital One Venture X. Mm -hmm. And I think I stated in that video that I went with that particular credit card because I don't travel home very often and I should be going home at least once per year to my home country because it's so close. It's the Bahamas is like right there. So I'm like, you know what? I'll go with the Capital One Venture X because that'll force me to go home and visit my family every year. And since I got it, I already booked a trip to go back home. Nice. <laughs> okay. So perfect. That's going to be that. That's going to be my strategy right there. I'm going to take advantage of that $300 um, credit every year. You decide to take a trip home. Um, in a few months, I'll just be going home and going back to one of the resorts that I've been to, which is yeah. the only one on my channel, so it's not that much of a surprise or a yeah. secret. But it's going to be interesting. I booked that entire trip using Capital One Venture X. Um, the cashback. Sorry, the credit. 
for uh -huh. the travel as well as miles that I already got on the card. So yes, I did redeem those miles for one cent per mile, but that's okay because it's an experience. And I really did it because my mom wants to experience um, one of the parades back home. So nice. it's like helping her to realize a dream. She always talked about it from as a kid. She's like, one of these years, I'm going to take you all there so we can see the parade. I really want to do it. And I would have never thought that I would be in a position yeah. to take her <laughs> to do something that she wanted to do with me as a kid. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. That is awesome. That's that's the beauty of the travel side of the credit card game, in my opinion. It's just that you can, you know, make experiences and memories happen that you might not have if you, you know, only were paying right. cash for everything. Right. And I think I think that's a beautiful thing. That's why I also am not a big, you know, cent per point theme. Like I don't necessarily care what cent per point I'm getting as long as it's above like a base that I set for each right. of my cards. Because in in reality in five years, even a year from now, you're not going to remember that Simper Point Redemption. You're just going to remember those memories with your right. mom, which is cool. Even though one night, and I did an extensive video on that trip, and I still try to remember exactly what it was. I, I don't. I know yeah. it was over two cents per point. Um, but I'm like, it is what it is. And a lot of people wouldn't go back to the exact same place. Mm. I I personally didn't want to love the hotel. I want to go back one day, but I didn't yeah. want to go back so quickly. But I think my mom, which is interesting because it was a little difficult to get her to go there. Sorry, yeah. mom, if you're watching, <laughs> but it was a little difficult. And she went there and while she was on the property, she was like, my God, this place is beautiful. Yeah. And ever since she kind of couldn't stop talking about the hotel. She's like, yeah, we should go back. I'm like, do you have cash to go back? <laughs> yeah. And then she goes, no, but you have points, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I got points for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, that's so fun. But, but, but it's crazy. It, it's interesting to see that even she is beginning to learn a little bit. She isn't going to participate in the credit card right. game like me, but she, she's learning that way. She came to me first, so, yeah. hey, do you have points so we can go? Right. That way without having to spend the cash. Because the hotel is extremely expensive during that time for whatever reason. Yeah. It's like, I think, at least double the price of when I went there, so. Mm. Man, yeah, that's crazy. That is funny though, because that is that is how your mom's kind of getting into the points, or at least starting to understand it, is exactly how I recommend people, you know, get their significant other or whatever to be interested. Is like just take them on a trip and be like, we got this for free. Well, for free in points. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like this, that shows people how cool the game is, and you know, they don't care about the cent per point value either. It's just like we made some awesome memories together. So I think that's the most important thing. Right. So are you? stockpiling points then in the sense of like since you aren't traveling a ton do you just spend for example all year stockpiling and then you make one big redemption or do you take any smaller ones and that's what's been happening yeah. <laughs> actually yeah. since yeah since i don't really take uh, smaller trips yeah it just it just happens so obviously i'm getting some referrals um accruing points and getting welcome offers and meeting those minimum set requirements don't miss the minimum set requirement though yeah mistake number one credit card 101 yeah um but it just it just happens naturally because I'm not actively trying to travel. Mm. But I don't mind like traveling locally to say go to Disney World. I haven't been to Disney World in forever and I'm about two and a half hours away from Disney World. Gotcha. So I don't mind redeeming points for a higher regency or something where it's gonna cost me like nine thousand, ten thousand, twelve thousand, whatever it is right now for one night. And yeah. that's fine. And probably do a little bit more domestic travel, but I think I'm still gonna end up stockpiling at least some. I haven't attempted to redeem any of my Amex points as yet. Mm. I want to redeem those for like a business class trip to yeah. either Europe or Japan or something one day. Japan is a little far and I don't like flying, so we'll see yeah. if that happens. But I'm thinking about going to London one day. I, I searched it a few months ago to go in March and I'm not doing it. So that's why I'm mentioning it now. <laughs> but I, it was like before summer started and I was speaking to one of my friends. My friend was like, yeah, I would totally be down to go like in March or whatever. And I looked it up and I found, I think, a decent flight. I don't remember what it was, but I didn't do it. Yeah. So. Interesting. I, w I want to go to London myself. I've never been over there. I have finally started booking. Well, first of all, you said that you're not a fan of flying, but if you're laying down in a business class seat, you might be pretty happy with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I experienced that once. Oh, really? So, <laughs> in, funny story. So, I remember, like, I was on a, going on a conference trip to work. Um, they sent me out to, ooh, I think it was, I was going to uh, the, the Twin Cities, St. Paul and Minneapolis. I think I was going out there. Yeah. And I remember because they paid for the ticket, right? Yeah. The base ticket to go out there and everything. And it was on Delta Airlines. I'm like, okay, 
if I'm going to do it, I need to do it now. Because at that point, I wasn't paying rent or anything. I was still living with some family. Yeah. I'm making decent money. It's like my first or second year of my career or whatever. But like, okay, if I'm going to do it, I need to do it now. I, and I felt like I wasn't going to be able to do it again. So thinking just domestic business class, which is usually a bigger seat, basically like my couch, right? Right, right. And my first leg up to from Fort Lauderdale to Atlanta, I didn't make the business class. So I had like premium economy or whatever. Right. But then from Atlanta to Minneapolis, I still get the business class seat. And they were like apologizing because the plane was, they had to switch over to plane. And like, we're sorry, we're going to be a little delayed. We had to switch over to plane, but you all are getting an upgrade. You're going on a bigger plane. I'm like, okay, what does that mean to me? Like, yeah. I don't really care. And then I look at my um, boarding pass on my phone and notice my seat change. Yeah. Because I had the last row in business class on the previous one, which was a Boeing 757. And it was like 5A or something like that. All of a sudden, I was in row eight or nine. I'm oh. like, the heck happened there? Yeah. So I looked at the plane. It was a Boeing 767. I'm like, okay, let me see what's going on and search to see if they have business class all the way to like row eight or nine, or did I get kicked out of business yeah. class? Yeah, man. And lo and behold, it was a lay flat seat. Mm. Very first time in business class. That's awesome. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> How lucky am I? It's so crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, I, fi I finally booked my first... Uh, big trip with Amex points in business class on Air France mm -hmm. next year uh, to Croatia. So that'll be fun. Sweet. Yeah, be at least a good, I think it's like a 12 hour flight there and back with some layovers. So I should get a good amount of time in that business class. And yeah. I will say it's sweet. It's nice when you can like lay down and yeah. the seat like massages you. There's an option for it. It wasn't that great on that airplane, but I still had the option. I just ran it like the entire time. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I was in awe. I was like, I paid $200 for that leg of the flight. So I literally yeah. got a $5,000 seat for $200 and didn't have to use the credit card to get it. Yeah, so. that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, I think that's my taxes and fees were like $200 each way or something like that. So I'm, I'll make a video about it, obviously. But yeah, I'm excited yeah. for that. And I think that's another one of those things where it's like, if you would take one of those redemptions, it man, just makes the credit card game so worth it, I feel like. Yeah. But also, I don't think that you necessarily should be stockpiling all of your points for only those trips because if you want to go, you know, back home to your home country for a little bit, you don't mm -hmm. want to have to not use points for it or whatever. Right. Like, just take their redemption. And since we're talking about stockpiling points, there's credit card 101 again, mistake number two. Yeah. <laughs> so just an explanation of that. Since I'm going back to the exact same hotel, when I went a year ago, and granted, I went off peak, but for the hotel room, it was 17,000 points per night. Now, but the exact same thing, and this is during peak time, but back then I think peak time was like 21,000. Don't quote uh -huh. me, I think it was. But now it's 29,000 points per night for, and I'm not even getting a queen room. It's gonna be like a king room. And I'm like constantly searching to see if it comes back because they took it away. I took a little bit too long to book it, but I did request it. I'm like, I want my own bed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but 29,000 points per night for something that was 17,000. And I'll be there for like three nights but it's going to cost me a little bit more than it cost me when they save four nights because the yeah. publisher points have increased. That's wild. Yeah. Okay. So now we kind of understand how you like to use your points. We know your, your kind of general strategy. I feel like it's just natural for us to do a little bit of a what's in my wallet. You don't have to necessarily get your wallet, but I do see it. I have uh, my wallet. So yeah. We're getting the wallet. <laughs> I, li I like to hear about more what cards you're using on a daily basis now that you have 10 or so. Okay, so I'm literally not using all 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that goes without saying. That would be like a little bit ridiculous. But what's in my wallet? Front and center cash, of course. Got to have oh, yeah. some cash. But before I get into it, Mr. Spencer Johnson, you have to do something for me. Oh, gosh. What is it? You have to close your eyes. <laughs> oh, that's a... I like yeah. how he's doing it without like any hesitation to close your eyes. I'm holding up my You hands. have to hold this card. Okay. Can I open them? No, not yet. Okay. Do you feel the power? I do feel some power here. This is not a very flexible card. It's got mm -hmm. some heft to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think you like that card that's in your hand? I mean, it's metal, so it'd be hard to not somewhat like it, right? Somewhat like it. You yeah. have to totally like it. Do you okay. like it? Yeah, I like it. I like it. There you go. You like that card. I, Without yeah, a shadow of a doubt, you like that card. Yes. Now hold it up. To the camera? Yep. There we go. Open your eyes. This is the best card ever. Gosh dang it, dude. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. I thought this might have been like your built card or your. I knew it wasn't the Venture X. Well, now I have to bring mine out too. No, 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 no. You Gosh get, dang it. You that's going to be <laughs> clipped all. But 
he basically got me to say that about the rose gold car. If you can't tell from there, Absolutely. I like the classic gold. I'm team classic gold. Let's but... go team rose gold. I got Spencer Johnson to say that he loves, <laughs> likes, likes. I didn't get him to say love, but he likes the rose gold. So he's officially team rose gold without <laughs> being official. <laughs> I mean, Anthony, I need some backup here in the comments, please, if you see this. But actually, I got Anthony on <laughs> his live too. Oh really? I like getting everybody. They yeah, so. got Stan. You I got, got Sebi on your side. Yep, I got Sebi on my side. I got Stan to say something. I got Anthony. And Anthony's like, I'm not going to say that. He's like, oh, crap, I just did. No. Yeah. <laughs> now I got Spencer, and one day this will be a short, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. I guess content. But I do. But yeah. I mean, I don't hate the color. I will say that. It's, it's very nice. I'm on team classic gold, but I did have a serious debate in my head whenever I got the gold card if mm. I would go rose gold or not, so. And I'll say this, the only reason I went rose gold was because it wasn't as pink as it looks fun. I didn't realize that. I thought it was going to be more pink, right. so I didn't get it. I actually, when I watched a few videos, I watched uh, Manny's and some other guys. I don't remember the other guys, but yeah. I watched their videos, and I'm like, okay, it's not as pink. I can do rose gold, because if it was pink as they show it, yeah. nah, I didn't like it at all. But yeah, so this one is in my wallet. Yeah. Obviously, it's my dining card, and it's my grocery spend card. Gotcha. So I keep it in my wallet for those purposes. Plus, I use those credits. Got to use those credits. Because other than that, this card would make absolutely no sense for me with that $250 yeah. annual fee that possibly will increase. Um, yeah. I'm thinking it's going to increase. I wouldn't doubt it. But right. Yeah, we'll see. It's also someone just said in one of my comments, like, the annual fee is now $395, but I think they meant the business gold and not Correct. Yeah. The, the regular gold. Um, next up is the Built. Yeah. The Built Rewards MasterCard, of course. This is such a great card um, for my rent, and I need to reveal something in my next video i didn't think they would do like what they did for me and i'm gonna okay. leave it open like that okay. because i don't want anybody else to see it just in case i don't get to record the video yeah, <laughs> so, i'll tell me off air but <laughs> but but yeah yeah i'll tell you off air i'll say this their customer service is absolutely amazing nice. um just being able to get that one x back on rent every single month is totally totally cool yeah next up and i'm totally not prepared like i have everything taped up i just walk around with my cards all taped I do the up same thing yeah <laughs> So next up is the Chase Beat on my limited. I still have it in my wallet. This is my catch-all when I do want Chase points. So I will make sure I have this so I can use that and keep that open. I don't get too much use out of the Freedom Flex. It just depends on what's available in the reward categories. And they do have PayPal right now, which a lot of people are taking advantage of. I've talked to a few people, and it's mm -hmm. like maxing out multiple like OG Freedom cards and Freedom Flexes for that. How do we build max those? I don't even pay. First of all, I don't really even use PayPal. I do yeah. have an account, but I don't use it. I don't either. I use it just for some like work-related stuff, I guess. But I guess PayPal can basically be used for anything. So it's like Christmas gifts. If you have Christmas oh, yeah. gifts you're buying for your family, it's mm -hmm. probably pretty easy to max out the mm -hmm. PayPal category. But, all right. but yeah, just something to note. Actually, yeah, keep going. I know some other cards you got, but... Next one in my wallet, none other than the Capital One Venture X. Oh, yeah. This has become my go-to catch-all, so that's why I said Freedom when I want Chase points. I use gotcha. the Freedom Unlimited. This is my go-to because I don't have to think about it. I just swipe it wherever. Um, but this is super easy. I like it. Easy to justify my wallet. Mm -hmm. It's somewhat premium. I know some people think it's not a premium card. It's premium for me, so I'm going to yeah. say it's a premium card, but I like it. Yeah. Plus, Thanks to everybody who already maxed out my referrals. Oh, that's it's awesome. On that. That's crazy. Like, I got maxed out on all of my referrals before I actually met my minimum spend requirement. That's, that's what happened to me, too. The Venture X is, I mean, it's just, it's such a good card. It's just so easy to get positive value yeah. out of that everybody can get value from it, you know? Absolutely. It, it, it's an amazing card. Yeah. Next up is, ooh, sexy. What do I have back here? You got a couple back there. Oh, my Hilton mm -hmm. Honors business card. Man, I'm jealous of that one. We all know the... We all know the drama that happened with this one. This is the first card I was declined for or denied for in a decade. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Can you believe that? And then get a three thousand dollar credit win. I'm still I'm so <laughs> salty about that. I'll I'll always remember that. Can't believe it's even in your wallet. Well, the only reason it's in my wallet is because I'm using it for gas. That's I guess six cents mm -hmm. on gas with Hilton. So gotcha. and it's a pretty good card. I, I did get all the, the the dining credits when I was there, staying at the Hilton, the Conrad in Vegas. So if you haven't stayed at the Conrad in Vegas, very nice property. I recommend it. Yep. Yeah. Then next up is the Amazon mm -hmm. Business Plus. So I put most of my YouTube business expenses on this. Um, I don't know. I think I have one that may be on my Chase Inc. business, but okay. maybe not. But anyway, this is what this one is for. So I just keep it strictly business now, especially since, again, baby credit limit with Amex. Oh, that's crazy to me. And then I have my Raising Cane <laughs> <laughs> food guard. Um, 
I don't eat there that often, but it's decent. So yeah. I just keep it there for whenever I go because apparently I can't get points when I'm using the app. I have to, they have to swipe the card. And it's wow. Ra- Raising Kings, you can do better. Yeah. At least put it in the Apple wall. That's crazy. Right. Oh, there's one more. One more. Okay. One more. Ooh. One more card. In, this is an exclusive, really. This is, yes, this is an exclusive. This video is about to come out. Yeah. I'll make sure I get it out before he releases this video. Yeah, this be but this is a Discover It cashback credit card, guys. This is a time travel piece. This yeah. is 10 years old. Believe it or not, it looks pristine shape. I mean, Spencer, yeah. go ahead. I don't even want to touch think? it. I feel like I'm going to break it. But no, this is like, I mean, it's crazy. I don't, there's no way I would have kept it this good for 10 years. Right. <laughs> and it wasn't even intentional. Like I was telling Spencer before we started recording that. I had it at the bottom of my box, almost the bottom of my box. And it's been in that particular box for like the past three, almost four years. Yeah. And I didn't even know that I had it. I thought I threw it away. But the Discover cashback credit card. And yes, I did go the extra mile and put it back in there. But it actually does have some sticky tape still wow. in there, believe it or not, on the original documents. But this is in my wallet for this quarter. And yeah, I currently have it in packaging. But Amazon.com and um, what's the other one? Target. Target nice. as Those well. are good categories. So very good c- categories, all for gifts. So yeah. I'll be good. Nice. And yeah, the reason, again, if maybe we didn't make it clear enough, that packaging is not what the Discover It comes in these days. That's no. like, it's almost like a premium credit card unboxing experience right. for the no annual fee Discover It card 10 years ago. Right. So that's pretty cool. And it makes sense because they came out with that card 10 years ago. So no, that makes me think about the built card and I have it off screen right now with right. The, box, the box that it came in. But since that's what the Discover it came in 10 years ago, it makes you wonder, Bill, to eventually mm. get rid of that packaging. Yeah, I think it's possible. I'm sure that costs them more money to do that. But right. But it is cool to like get the hype around it. And again, like you said, if they revamped it right before they did that packaging, mm-hmm. that would make sense as to why they did the packaging yep. like that. But it is pretty cool that you have it. It makes me think like I probably should keep those nicer packages that I get, which I... Really? Yeah. Which I didn't do. But I guess the Venture X was the most premium card that I have and that wasn't a good no it yeah. came in the FedEx envelope within an envelope that had nothing not even capital one on it yeah so that's, that's like the my upgrade to the Sapphire Reserve was the same kind of thing it was just like a white envelope but it was inside the FedEx Express or whatever I think the gold card was my most premium unboxing the gold card what did I, your gold card come in might give it an envelope maybe it did maybe I'm thinking of it just because I got it again in that FedEx and I was like the first one I got Probably. priority but yeah, I'm gonna have it on my channel. I guess I could go look. But. Yeah, you can, it, we do so many videos. We can't remember yeah. every single detail. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, um, I credit card companies need to understand. At least for us in the credit card game, I know everybody. A lot of other people don't care, but we care. I yeah. guess because we want to create content, so I'm a little biased. That helps. <laughs> yeah, but it's also that quick dopamine, man. Every, yeah. The unboxing of it feels so cool. Like yeah. I can't imagine unboxing the built card. Like the first person that did that, and it wasn't even on YouTube yet. Mm-hmm. It's probably so crazy to see this for a no annual fee card. Right. But. And it's crazy. I remember so much detail from that unboxing, and I'm going to reveal it, or you probably watched the video already, some of you. But it was like crazy because back then, 10 years ago, it was no such thing as you apply online and you get a decision right away. Right. It was, I applied online, and they were like, okay, we'll get back to you. Yeah. Like, I'm like, <laughs> so, and that was normal. So I applied, and they totally forgot that I applied for this card, and this thing arrived in the mail. Yeah. And it was in a cardboard envelope, so like the same size. So literally like a legit unboxing. I obviously mm. don't have that anymore. But I remember unboxing this thing, opening it, and I'm like, what is it? In fact, I didn't open it within the first few days wow. because it didn't have any address on it. It had my address, and then it was a P.O. box uh, for the return address. And I'm like, oh, what is this thing? And I was still thinking of like anthrax that was going on yeah. in the early 2000s. Yeah. And I'm like, what's this weird package? And I don't know what to do with it. So... I legitimately set it aside thinking whether I'm going to open it or throw it away. Wow. And one day I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to open it and hope for the best. Yeah. They opened it and I looked at it. I'm like, discover, what yeah. is this? And then when I flipped it open, I was like, holy crap, I got my first credit card. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's such a cool. totally remember it. So that's cool. Such a cool first credit card experience too. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. But it got me hooked for sure. For sure. But it didn't really get me hooked. But yeah. yeah. (laughs) Five years later. Right. Um, But I guess I might as well show some of my cards. We have a lot of similarities. I don't know if I do. Yeah, I do have tape on most of these. So the backs aren't taped. But I have also the Blue Business Plus in my wallet. And we also have like the same wallet, which is kind of funny. You have the classic gold on the wallet. Oh, stop it. Stop (laughs) it. Stop it. Stop it. (laughs) But yeah, so I have my Blue Business Plus for all the business stuff, which normally is all online anyways. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I have the Venture X as well 
for i use this in my catch-all right now it's the same idea with the freedom unlimited like i have it and i honestly use the freedom unlimited for catch-all online mm. but ventrax in person because it's a cooler looking card that's right. literally I mean, it is a cooler looking card i will say that's why i really do it and then my most recent edition of the Sapphire Reserve, which I think honestly is probably my favorite card design that I have. I actually like that design, to be honest. Yeah. I don't like the Sapphire Prefer, but that one, I think it's, it's tastefully done. It's like a right. little bit of gra graphics. It's not straight across the card like the Sapphire Preferred. Yeah, and for whatever reason, like this engraving, I guess you don't have the Sapphire Preferred out, but it's a way more premium mm -hmm. than the Preferred. Like it's just a nicer card. Um, but yeah, so that's like honestly probably my favorite looking card I have now. And then the gold mm -hmm. card so very similar honestly setups i guess the reserve is swapped Actually, out yeah for like maybe your built card basically like i don't have the built card yet pretty much yeah the one i'm most jealous of though is that the hilton mm -hmm. business because they haven't increased the offer and i don't even know since probably you got it yeah and i've been waiting for so long to get that card and still and haven't i went through <laughs> i went through hell and back to get that card yeah maybe it's not even worth it at this point <laughs> right Oh, man, that, that experience. I remember, and I tried to record it because I was on the on the phone with them, and it took how long? I was recording for a long time because I had to speak to, like, five different people yeah. because they were trying to figure out why in the world was I declined and nobody could tell me. And, like, I think 40 minutes into it because I was bouncing back and forth between people being on hold and all that, I'm like, you know what, I can't. I just can't record this. I'm not going to edit it. It's way too much. Right. So, yeah, I, I definitely went through a lot to get that card. So I'm a little proud of it. The only thing I don't like, See how much tape see how much tape I have to use on this? Yeah. It's like so cluttered. You can see a little bit more in the back. Like they put the credit card number again on the white shirt where you're supposed to sign. Literally all of all oh. of the digits are in the back here as well. Like, Interesting. I don't understand it. But anyway, such is life. I think so the other thing too is I imagine that they're about to change that card. And I wonder oh. how you feel about it because they just mm -hmm. changed all the personal Hilton cards. Mm -hmm. So I think even if I applied right now, I honestly think I might get denied kind of like um, Eric, which they might, I don't think Eric's talked about this, but mm -hmm. with the Aspire card, he applied right before they made the changes and they wouldn't let him get it because mm -hmm. they're making the changes probably and they didn't probably. say that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm wondering if they'll do the same for the business card and hopefully they will oh. increase the offer when they do that, but I don't know. That's, that's, that's potentially true actually because a lot of people are being put in pop-up jail. Yeah. So if anything, maybe they'll be a little bit more lenient because it's a business card. That's what I'm hoping. I don't know. I guess what if they changed it similar to how they changed the personal cards, how would that affect your outlook on it? Would you still be fine to hold it or? Well, I don't want the annual fee to go up. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I imagine that it, if it matches a surpass, it will go up to whatever 150. Ugh. Well, I don't know. I'll have to really think about it because like I said, I'm only using it for gas expensive. I don't put anything else on the card. Yeah. So at that point, it's going to depend on how, how many times per year I stay at a Hilton property. Mm -hmm because the value you get from staying at the Hilton property with that $50 credit per day is pretty darn good, especially yeah. when you're at a more expensive hotel like a Conrad or whatever. Right, that free breakfast. and yeah. Right, but if that's not the case, then I'll have to reevaluate to see if I want to keep it or not. I like having a gold status. That yeah. I will say, it's cool to look in, log into my Hilton owner's account and see that it's gold and not this whatever color it was before. Right. So. Yeah, I have, I've had the same experience. I have the Marriott Boundless credit card. It's my only hotel credit card. And I, I used it for my stay here and got mm -hmm. some en enhanced benefits with that, which was cool. Even just with silver status, it got me some extra stuff with silver, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, I mean, that's why I want the Hilton mm -hmm. business because I at least get Hilton gold. Like that's really all right. I want it for. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just haven't been able to do it yet, but it is stopping me from booking any Hilton properties. Also because I don't necessarily want to use my Amex points for Hilton properties. Right. You know? yeah. So it's like I've done it before and mm -hmm. it was a little bit painful, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if I had some stockpiled from the welcome offer, that'd be great. And that right there is why I paid cash to go to Vegas. <laughs> and I didn't. I used my Amex points with Hilton for that. Oh, stay. yeah. No, but. I. it was too expensive at that point. How many points did I have? I think I had like maybe around 150,000 Amex points. Yeah. So and when I finally decided to go to Vegas, which was a little bit late, right? Yeah. Um, the price per night for the room with the points actually went up because yeah. Kelby booked one night. I don't remember how much he said. It was way less. Mm. And I think when I looked, it was like 80000 or something like that per night. So it's like, yeah, yeah. no. Okay. That's basically what I, I think what I paid. I, I think I've, I had to use 120,000 Amex points for that Woo. four nights or whatever, three nights, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's because Amex converts at a one to two rate to Hilton. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, I didn't get it during a transfer bonus. That would have been better. Mm -hmm. But in reality, I think I still got like a 1.8 cent per point redemption for mm -hmm. my Amex points, which is fine by me. 
better than I usually get, honestly. But. So since we're talking about it, and not to be the person asking the questions, but no, um, since I paid cash, right? I paid cash to go to Vegas. You used points. What was your room like? Like, what floor were you on? Was your room noticeably smaller? Was it still like the same quality from what you could tell? What was that experience like? Yeah. So since you wait, you did not have the card yet. You didn't have the Hilton. I had the card. Oh, you did. Yeah. So maybe your gold status helped a little bit. Since I don't have any Hilton cards, I don't have any Hilton status. So that also probably plays a little bit of a role. Um, but I didn't get an upgrade necessarily. I didn't get like a strip view, which I think is like the okay. upgraded room. Mm -hmm. I think I just got the uh, like city view is what it was called or whatever. Gotcha. But the room itself was great. I mean, it's one of the nicest rooms I've stayed in. Mm -hmm. But yeah, nothing like crazy on the uh, elevated benefits. But if I had the golds, like I couldn't eat breakfast at the right. Waldorf because it was like uh, like 30 whatever bucks a person for mm -hmm. breakfast. I was like, I'm not paying that. <laughs> so, so yeah, if I had gold status, so I would have saved probably like just with the free breakfast, like, <laughs> like a hundred, I mean, probably close to like $200, mm -hmm. honestly, for how many days we were there and it was me and another person. But yeah, so I, I didn't get anything crazy with it, but the room itself was nice and they treated me well for, I felt really weird being in there as like a 23 year old and everybody <laughs> else in the Waldorf is like, upper 50s 60s i'm like yeah, i was about crazy. to say the waldorf sounds like a older hotel <laughs> i mean yeah i don't know if it's an older hotel but the I mean, like older, crowd right yeah. o older clientele is what i think yeah. but um so i guess i had the benefit of being in the hotel with calby calby stayed one night so he used points to redeem his room right um and of course i paid cash but i didn't even wait to use my gold status i thought about it to see if i can get an upgrade but I'm like, mm, no, this is Labor Day weekend. Yeah. So I literally, I just booked the strip view and I selected to be on the highest floor they had available, which was the 57th floor. Wow. Um, but Kelby, if I'm remembering correctly, he was on the 11th floor with mm. his points. He didn't have a strip view. So his view was literally like the roof of oh. basically the entrance. So he was a bit above it. So he, it wasn't just the roof, but he was a bit above it, but you couldn't really see anything. And his room was a little bit smaller. Yeah. Because when I walked in, I'm, I'm like, I feel like your room is a little bit smaller than mine. And Gabby is like, okay, CJ. I'm like, yeah. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying, I feel like, I'm like, pay attention to it. Because then we went up to my room. And his wife was like, yeah, your room is definitely bigger. I mean, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Because it was still a king room. They had a king room as well. But like the distance between the bed and the, the drawers were like the safe was sizable, probably a few feet. Hmm. But the view definitely like. I yeah. felt like the view was probably worth it to splurge a little bit. But the hotel wasn't that expensive overall for the three nights when you yeah. think about it. I'll have to try because I know, you know, like Luke and Stan stayed at the Waldorf with me. Mm -hmm. And, but then like Sebi, for example, I think he said that he preferred the Conrad properties but, but between Waldorf and Conrad. So I think next time I go, if I am going to, you know, hopefully have Hilton points and all that by then, yeah, I would probably stay at the Conrad and try it out. But. I love the gym. I know a lot of people yeah. don't pick a hotel and go on a trip to work out, but I picked the hotel because of the gym. The gym yeah. is awesome. But I honestly like being away from the crowd. Simply, yeah, that's the other that's thing. That's my personality. Yeah. So. The Waldorf is definitely easier to walk from. Right. Or, I mean, I don't even think the Conrad is really walkable at all, right? No. Yeah. Not from what I remember, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, no, either way, that, yeah, I think that was a great trip. Hopefully, we'll do more of those and continue, yeah. continue to get those data points and stuff. Cause it's, Absolutely. It's a fun game. And Vegas is, like, the best place to really... Right you know, hack your way to the, the points. Uh, Be a high roller in Vegas with points. Right. Just don't gamble a lot. You'll lose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I know like Chad had like his MGM card and stuff and we like stick it in all the machines whenever he was going to, I didn't know anything about that, but. I think I, I definitely did not gamble. I may have been the only one. I don't know. I don't know how many people did, but I had so much fun watching people lose. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad to say, but. <laughs> I was one of those that you probably watched lose, but. I had yeah. so much fun watching it. It's like, mm. I get to see you lose here, but he granted some of them I didn't understand what was actually going on. Right. Because I don't gamble and understand some of those games, but it was very fun watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially the slot machine one, man. We were like, stop, stop <laughs> now. Like, she was up, I think she was up like 10 bucks or something at yeah. one point. And we we're like, take it. I'm like, this is it. Like, you're not going to get it. She's like, no, I just want an even number, like, no change or whatever. Yeah. And she yeah. finally get an even number at one buck. <laughs> yep exactly that's how vegas gets you yeah man so i guess we saw whatever what is that six credit cards you have yeah. other ones what are the other ones that you don't use or don't have out at least when okay. i just cover it okay. freedom flex now you are testing my memory uh freedom flex 
Um, that's that's eight. So there's two more. Cream Flex. Chase Inc. Business Cash. Uh, what's the other one? Hold on. I'm trying to think with you. I, I don't. Which one am I missing? Um, it's not an Amex card. No, it's not an Amex card. I have all of the Amex cards in my wallet, actually. Oh, the forgettable one. The stuff I prefer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the one that you use for redemptions only. Like for redemptions only. No one that, you can't even remember it as, what credit card do you not have in your wallet right now? Remember every other credit card I have, but not that one. That I mean, that's a big reason I upgraded to the reserve is because I literally just never used that card. But right. now with the reserve, like at least I'm using it for all my travel purchases mm -hmm. because I'm getting 3X and the travel credit right. and all the extra benefits, like all the protections and stuff, lounge access. Like mm -hmm. I need it in my wallet now. And that's what I like about it. Granted, I'm paying almost 500 more dollars right to do that but you know Just, uh, insane right but like stuff i preferred i used it to go to vegas only because i realized the amex gold card doesn't have what is it travel insurance or whatever it is trip cancellation protection it's I like one of the insurances it, it doesn't have yes i was yeah. like oh so i guess i need to use my stuff i preferred that in case something happens because yeah. this was still during hurricane season and peak hurricane season at that so couldn't risk it so yeah, we were lucky to even get in it was like flooded when we got there Oh, snap. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got Every there before everybody. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened. And then I went to sleep. Yeah, I think, like, the weekend before we got there, it was, like, seriously, like, everything was flooded. Like, you couldn't even yeah. drive in Vegas. Like, That's it was what crazy. I heard. But... And it's crazy, like, because down there in Florida, it yeah. rains, and I'm fine with the rain. Like, we're all fine with the rain because it rains all the time. But in Vegas, like... Yeah, it, like, shut everything down. <laughs> it was, like, I call it a little drizzle, a little sprinkle of rain. I was up in my room, 57th floor, right? And I wanted to go down to the pool. It was my last night there. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go down to the pool for like an hour or so. And I see like it starts to sprinkle. I'm like, but it doesn't look like it's really going to rain. Because you can kind of tell. Yeah. By the time I get down to the ground floor and I walk out the doors, everyone's walking in. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? what in the world is going on? And I step out and it literally like sprinkles the rain. I'm like, well... Did they close the pool down or something? So I go back up to my room and I look out the window and I'm up so high, right? So I legit yeah. have to be like right on the window and looking down. And I see all of the staff like rushing around, grabbing all the towels. And I'm like, I'm so in awe as to what is going on down there. I'm like, did they legit close the pool? Like not a soul was around there. Not one soul. I, I, I've i never seen anything like that because I'm always in a tropical a tropical um, climate. So Yeah. Yeah. Being in Florida, you're used to the the crazy storms and yeah. stuff. That was funny. <laughs> well, I guess that's all of your credit cards then. We can see now kind of how you use the ones you do. So there's not that many that you literally never use, but some of them are definitely used for very specific situations, which I think makes mm -hmm. sense. It's like you have your core credit card set up and your supplemental, like, you know, perks and benefits card right. set up, like your mm -hmm. your uh, Hilton cards and the preferred and all that. So Right, right. Cool. Yeah. And with all of the credit cards that you do have, it looks like you have cards from what, like four or so different lenders, three to four lenders, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I asked this question to a few people like Daniel, for example, but if you could only choose one lender to have cards from, from here on out, who would you go with? And you can assume that you will have in a Visa credit card for like international travel. So if you want to say Amex, you can, No, yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah. Hey, um, well, Spencer, I appreciate you trying to make a case for Amex, but I think we both know. Yeah. <laughs> I am still salty about how Amex is being treated me, so. <laughs> I don't blame you, yeah. Amex, just because I'm salty, that's a no. Sorry to all of the Amex fanboys. Do not cancel me, but I have a reason. Yeah. I am I'm very salty with Amex. Um, since it's not going to be Amex, it'll probably be, it'll be between Chase and Capital One. Now, granted, I know Capital One miles aren't as valuable as Chase, but Capital One is so easy. You literally just need to venture X and a saver one, and I'll be good for most people. Right. That's it. Yeah, that's fair. I, you know, it's interesting now because we see like uh, Wells Fargo is kind of making a case for being a pretty good oh, lender, right. and I think it's Chad was saying it's on Wednesday that they announced the transfer I partners. So. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, you have the built Mastercard already. If for you know somehow you're able to work with like the mm -hmm. autograph card um, and the built transfer partners as well. It could start to become people's favorite lenders. So. It could be. Ooh. I don't know. It's yeah. I um I think I've been calling for this. I don't know if I if if it ended up in my footage whenever I did review the autograph card when it came out. Mm -hmm. But I did think back then I was like, you know, this could be a very very powerful card if for whatever reason you can be able to transfer it out or Wells Fargo decides to pair it with a premium travel card, right. which is I thought they were going to go that route. They probably still can. But to learn that they're bringing transfer partners, I'm really excited. I'm like, are they going to get Hyatt and are they going to get American Airlines? Yeah. It, yeah. If they got, I mean, 
I have a feeling it'd be hard for them to get high, but then you see Bilt did it. And I guess Bilt's right. not technically Wells Fargo, so like maybe that's where the line is, but But they have that connection now. Right. Like so And honestly, if that happens, I mean I could definitely see myself like going for like the Wells Fargo duo or whatever for a little bit and trying to run that and see how I like it in combination with like the Chase setup because right. they work really well together. But yeah, that's an intriguing thing. And then yeah, go ahead. If that happens, um, we're all going to be making videos. Please yeah. don't get tired of us. Some of our some of our videos won't be edited at all. <laughs> yeah, because everyone out. will want that news out at the same time. But it's it's going to be such a a game changing experience to the credit card game if those transfer partners are really good. That I think everyone is just going to create those videos out of excitement. And right. I think Wells Fargo is pretty much due for some real excitement. They've been through quite a bit. Yeah, I agree. I think the I mean the hate or whatever you want to call it was obviously justified for a bit but i think like all these lenders are doing stuff that we don't know i think that yeah if they have good cards you take advantage of them and right. you know and their welcome offers are pretty decent yeah for their credit cards they're though. respectable for yep. sure i do wonder though if they do once they have the transfer partners it we'll see how they turn out but i feel like they could easily make a case for giving an annual fee to that card oh yeah for so sure that, for sure. that could be in the future but or they add a premium you know travel credit card that'd be nice to like compete with the venture x because right. the saver one is free and it has all those good values, right? Right, good, um, mm. good um, categories. So I can yeah. see a premium travel card with an annual fee of around. If they were to even undercut the venture X by forty five bucks, so three fifty. Yeah, man, it could be an interesting. It could be an interesting like year or two in the credit card game for sure. Especially mm-hmm. with like the new like world of high credit cards supposed to come out. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. Waiting, I'm glad you mentioned. That's what I actually wanted to talk about a little okay. bit. So if this new world of higher credit card comes out, I am definitely going to get that. That was one thing in my credit card journey for this year. I got every card on my list except the world of higher credit card because the welcome offer is trash yeah, at the moment. Not, yeah. it, it's terrible. So if they do come up with a really good premium travel card, I am definitely going to get that. That's another reason why I'm still sticking below 524. Yeah. Currently, I think after this month, I'll be back down to 324. I'm at 424 right now. So I'll be okay. back to 324. So keeping a slot open, fingers crossed. I don't know if it's going to happen, but Man. pretty excited. I hope it gets us a decent status with Hyatt, But Yeah, I don't think they can. Go, I don't think they should go higher than Explorer. So I don't think they should give Globalist out. Mm-hmm. You know, like the Aspire, I guess, is one like with Hilton that gives you the highest status. Right. That's, that's like the one thing with Hyatt that they still have is that you have to earn your status. And I like that. But if they gave it Explorers, that's way better than their other two car- credit cards right now. And yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I'm excited for that card too, but that's the thing. It's like, okay, I don't have the build card yet. If the autograph comes out with partners, maybe I apply for that for the channel to get experience. Or they are having partners, but if it's right, good, right. Um, yeah. then I'll be at like, what, 724? So it's like, <laughs> it's so many decisions to be made, but it'll be cool to you know, start changing my roadmaps with the change of these lenders and see what happens. Exactly. But yeah, yeah. Wells Fargo was never on my radar, and every time I get a notification because of my build card and it's Wells Fargo, I'm like, yeah. But it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. They got a good product, or at least Built has a good product underneath right. them. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. But well, that's great. I think we covered about everything we can on the credit card stuff right now. But of course, creator conversations. Big part of this is talking about your creator journey. Yeah. Um, so the the natural place to start with that would be just asking if you could tell us a little bit more about why you got started on YouTube and mm-hmm. kind of the journey that you've gone through to, to get to here. Right. I think my journey on YouTube is a little bit unique okay. <laughs> because a lot of people start a YouTube channel with a goal. Like some people know exactly what they want to do. Other people just start randomly not knowing, you know, they just start a channel. Right. Me, I started because I wanted to challenge myself. I'm like, I want to be able to get 1000 subscribers, 4,000 watch hours, without having to tell any family, any of my friends, or asking anybody else to watch it. And I was really inspired by, their name is um, Catherine Manning. She was like uploading yep. a lot back then. I think this was 2019 before like she took off. I found her or YouTube, positioned her video on my home feed right before she hit 1,000 subscribers. And wow. I remember that 1,000 subscriber video, but her channel was like taking off like that when I found her, right? And she was, like she was on it, man. She was doing three videos a week, I believe. Like every other day, she was like uploading a video because she understood that the algorithm was working for her channel, yeah. and she had to get on it. And a lot of people weren't really doing the how-to YouTube um, right. videos yet, and she really pioneered it. Pioneered, ugh, 
pioneered it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Um, and it was very interesting and inspiring because it's like, here's this young lady teaching about how to YouTube and she didn't have a thousand subscribers yet. But you can see that this thing is working. So I'm yeah. like watching her videos. I'm like, oh, she can do it. I can do it. Yeah. So I'm like looking at her and taking notes. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to hit this game. I'm going to be able to do that. And then I record my first video and I think it got three views in the first three days. Yeah. <laughs> and all three views are my own. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I remember that. I was like, oh, what the heck? <laughs> what did she teach me? It didn't work. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I never stopped. I remember my very first video that got, I think it was 100 views within that evening. And I was actually moving up here to where I live now. And I literally got the video up, recorded, got it up, and packed my car and decided to drive, drive my stuff up. And then I checked the, the views later on that evening after I unpacked my car. And I'm like, I have 100 views? Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? In one evening? And it was because it was a stimulus check video. And I was like, I think I found something here. Yeah. Like, And I think I went back to another video. And I don't remember because they have them all unlisted now. But I think I went back to like another finance video and it didn't work so well. Mm -hmm. And I noticed like all of the finance creators were like, just about all, probably not everybody. They were like creating these stimulus check videos. And I see all of the views they're getting. I'm like, if I can just get a portion of that. I think I can get to 1,000 subscribers. So I did that. Yeah. And then I did the Catherine Manning approach with that, right? So at that point, I think I uploaded four videos a week, which was crazy because a lot of people were working from home at that time or not working from home, but like not working. Right. I was still working. I was working from home. Like I had to get online and I had to turn on my camera and check in with my team. And I actually had a major project at work. I was working on a major plan for the entire city and i'm like okay i don't know what to do like yeah. <laughs> but i need to get this stuff that says waking up really early like 4 a.m searching for all the information that was coming on and getting the video recorded because it needed to be up by 8 a.m because everybody was who was anybody was uploading that video early on so i'm like i have to get it done so it can be up so i can get my views because yeah. they would come and then it'd be like done right? right so that's why i started that's how i started stimulus checks then eventually I went back to, what did I go back to? I think I tried to go back to regular standard general finance, but I landed on credit cards because credit cards is fun. Yeah. Interesting. So that, I mean, that's kind of like a, not the whole journey, but similar in the sense of like, well, you found a lot of success with the stimulus stuff. Man. What, how many subscribers did you get to with that? Somewhere over a thousand and they got burnt out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, four videos a week, but then you stumble kind of into the credit card niche by happenstance. I feel like that's kind of what happened with like Josh Butler, for example, he was yeah. posting the general personal finance, mm -hmm. landed on credit cards, worked really well for him. Anthony Venture did a lot of the same. Right. And there's a couple other guys I've talked to that went that same exact approach. And mm -hmm. it obviously, for whatever reason, like all roads lead back to the credit card right. game. And yeah, I'm just lucky that I kind of started in that and have been able to just keep doing it. But YouTube is a grind. I can't imagine doing four videos a week. Man, it was tough. And were you editing like full? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like how I'm editing now, yeah. but back then... I had, I think I had the MacBook Pro. Yeah, I think I did. But it was like, I was just learning the programs. Like I had, I was working on Adobe Premiere Rush. Well, before that, I was working on I iMovie. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, this isn't that great. I can't put text. I couldn't figure out how to put text on the yeah, darn thing. That's crazy. So then I get Premiere Rush and it, of course, is limited. Yeah. So I think when I went back to credit cards, I went to Premiere Pro. But yes, I was editing those videos. So literally wake up and I didn't have like the fancy equipment like you see sitting over there. Right. So I'm like trying to remember, like, how do I say all these things? Uh, this is what this says. And eventually I think I'm like, well, someone is literally, they have their laptop in front of them. And they're reading everything. So I'm like, I'll just sit my laptop down yeah. and whenever I forget something, I'm going to read it. Um, but the interesting part about that, which I wasn't prepared for, which also caused me to get burnt out, was the mental toll. Yeah. Like, and I consider myself pretty strong mentally. Like a lot of things don't get to me. But what was happening that kind of got to me was since it was so competitive like i knew there were or i i highly suspect that there are people in this space like coming on to my video to like just dislike my video because it was so competitive they wanted their videos to be seen and pushed further yeah, yeah. and it and, and this kind of made sense to me because literally when i uploaded a video if it started to take off all of a sudden i would start like getting dislike 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 like literally like five or so within the first minute which isn't typical at all no, on youtube yeah. And what it would do is cause the algorithm, once you get so many in a row, 
like I literally saw it like kind of shut off. They may have changed it now, but back then that's what it was doing. Cause like my video was going like this and then all of a sudden it's like flat lighting. And it was like, what the heck? Yeah. But none of the comments were negative. People were like, thank you so much for this information, blah, blah, blah. And eventually like the likes would far outpace the dislikes. But literally, I think there was one video, I got like 20, almost 20, like back to back. Mm. And like, I was getting the likes, but it was like, whoever was doing the dislikes, it was like so many at once. Interesting. And I'm like, this is, this is a little rough. Like yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Like you, I'm waking up at 4 a.m. I'm finding the best information I can find. And like, people are disliking my video, what the heck is going on? So yeah. that was a lot. And then all of the numbers, like I wasn't prepared for how that would impact me mentally. So YouTube behind the scenes is numbers, numbers, numbers. How many views you're getting? How many likes you're getting? How many comments you're getting? You can see when the YouTube algorithm, you can figure out when it's pushing your videos. Right. Um, you see the number of impressions you're getting. You see the click-through rate, like so many numbers. Right. And what really impacted me was when I got a video that got 5,000 views one day, and then I had the expectation in the next video we get 5,000 yeah. views. But the next video only got 1,000 views coming from someone who never got 100 views. It's yeah. like, oh my gosh, I'm a failure. Like, what, what's going on? Right. And then I release, release another one and it doesn't hit 1,000 views. I'm like, oh my gosh, this, is, this isn't working out. I'm not going to hit 1,000 subscribers. So it was a lot mentally and yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, that, I mean, YouTube is such a mental game. And it's crazy to hear like the difference in like even just creator, assuming we're talking like other creators that are very competitive in that specific yeah. part of the personal finance niche. But yeah, because in our specific niche, like the credit card niche, I feel like it's the opposite of like the competitive nature. It's more like we're all, you know, rising each other up, lifting each other up, which I think is really cool. So I imagine that was a bit of a breath of fresh air for you whenever you did get connected mm -hmm. with the credit card folks. So do you remember like that experience at all when it first happened? Absolutely. That's like completely different than my experience. Uh, my previous experience in a different niche. So with the credit card niche, yeah, definitely everyone tries to lift each other up. We're always stepping, kind of stepping on each other's toes because the content, the information is the information, right? But the difference is we all have different personalities and different perspectives. And yeah. that's what's been helping. I remember like when I first got started with reviewing credit cards, of course, it was just, of course, it was just like reading the information because right. I didn't know how to make this person. I'm like, it's just information. Let right. me just give people information. But what helps is once you start to get the credit cards, now you have this different experience, yeah. this different perspective, and nobody else can recreate that. Like, for example, the mm -hmm. Amex Gold card, everybody loves the most people in the credit card game. We love the Amex Gold card. It's this amazing card that offers a ton of value, but I get it. I'm like, okay, it's, yeah. it's cool, but it kind of doesn't make sense for me, but I'm forcing myself to use it to get value out of it. And I'm able to share that perspective and that's right. totally fine. But then connecting with people like you and Stan and Anthony Venture and having this little beef with Anthony Venture about yeah. the team Rose Gold versus Classic Gold, even though Classic Gold is clearly losing. Um, <laughs> That's, that's totally fine. Like, I can get onto your video. People will comment first, and I can tell them to go away, yeah. and nobody cancels me, and I absolutely love it. Yeah. I, I like, I am so inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. So inappropriate in the comments. They're like, go away, I'm first, I'm always first. And it's cool because people know I'm kidding, and they know I'm poking fun. And it's funny when I go to another video, and people are like, oh, CJ isn't here yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's such a tiny community, not just with the creators, but with the audience. Yeah, for which sure. Which is pretty cool. I wonder if you're going to get first comment on this video. Might have to let you in on this one a little early or something. Well, we'll see. It depends <laughs> on what's going on, right? Yeah. So we'll see. I I mean, I am always first. It doesn't yeah, matter sure. who may be there. Yeah. They are always disqualified until I comment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the races after CJ comments. But no, that's awesome. I mean, that's a, the biggest thing. I guess I want to ask you this question, but just to put my perspective on it. I think the biggest thing that I found enjoyment out of on YouTube or having a channel is the cre the connection with other creators. As, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously as well as the audience, but I get to see the other creators more often. I get to right. talk to y'all, you know, in calls like or text you every single day, basically. So mm -hmm. that's been my favorite part of it. But I wonder what with your like length of experience on that other niche as well, what's been like your favorite part of YouTube so far? So I would say I would agree with that because with the other niche, I didn't connect with anybody. It was more so connecting with the audience, like. I began to see more people commenting more regularly on those videos when I did the stimulus check videos. And sometimes when I didn't upload, they're like, is everything okay? I, you didn't upload today. I'm like, people actually notice that. Um, yeah. But coming over to the credit card side, like 
I connect with people here, like the creators, never connected with any creators on the other side. It was literally, like I said, like I suspect people were like disliking my video because they wanted to to rise. Like they wanted their channel to grow and I was competition. And we were all literally like reciting basically the same information. And at that right. point, I don't think I had that much of a personality either on YouTube. It's kind of pretty new to camera as well. So yeah, yeah. People don't realize how awkward it is to look at a camera and speak. Like, yeah. there's nobody around, and you don't realize how monotone you usually sound. Right. Like, how I'm speaking now, I don't usually talk like this. Right. It probably do a, a little more so now because I'm used to recording, but That's, it's definitely not a, a regular, regular thing. Yeah. That's exactly thing. my experience, too, with the, the first few videos. Man, it's so awkward to put a camera in front of you. But, you know, these days, it's kind of like... I can kind of picture like the audience in there and it's a lot easier. And I think we all kind of get that. But yeah. also I think the fact that we do get to collaborate with each other, like these yeah. conversations right now are way less awkward than they could be because we've met in person already. We've already done all this stuff, which sure. doesn't happen with, you know, every niche. I think it's a very special place that we're in and I'm just happy to keep constantly doing it, you know? Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely fun. And it's something I didn't expect. And the interesting part is um, my family, when they, at least my mom and I finally told her and my sister I'm doing YouTube or whatever. I don't think I ever told my sister. My mom told my sister. Well, oh, nice. that's another story. <laughs> um, so when I was thinking about going to Vegas, and I think it was my sister. It was one of them. My mom and my sister are like, so are you going to go to Vegas with your friends? I'm like, I don't think I've ever referred to any of them as my friends. Yeah. So it's interesting to see that they started to refer to you guys as my friends before I openly started yeah. referring to you all. So. I know that's the crazy part is like we are all kind of coworkers in a sense, but more right. like just like friends than anything. Like that's what I tell people these days. It's like, yeah, I came to Florida for a trip, but I'm filming with like my friends that I've met right. through YouTube. Like it's a pretty cool experience. So yeah, I'm I'm just appreciative that you even let me in your place. I mean, no problem. You know, we're technically, you know, we've never would never would have met outside of YouTube, but never would have met outside of YouTube. Absolutely not. But they yeah. wouldn't have known who you are. Like you said you're twenty three, right? Yeah. So almost ten years older than you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we have the same exact lived experience with YouTube and the credit card game and right. like mind like minded connections, I think, are really, really great. Absolutely. Uh, then as for your channel, I like to ask everybody this as like a final question. Mm -hmm. What kind of goals do you have like for the next twelve months, for example? Like what can we mm -hmm. expect maybe to see from your channel that we haven't yet, or just what are your goals with it? Ooh, okay. Let's see. For the channel, so I know where I want to be twelve months from now. I definitely so I hit the five thousand subscribers yeah. recently and I didn't even post about it. I'm so bad. <laughs> I was in the middle of moving. That's why I didn't post about it. So but I do I owe everybody a post and a thank you and all of that because that's a major achievement. I wanted to achieve five thousand by the end of this year. Yeah. And I remember when I said that goal, um, I don't remember exactly who, but someone said to me, like, but are you serious about that? Because you're already over 3,000 subscribers. I'm like, I'm not even getting 100 subscribers per month, dude. So yeah. that's like, that's a stretch, dude, to get to the 5,000. Um, but I would like to be able to get to 10,000. And honestly, it doesn't matter if I get there or not, because what matters is being able to create that content and continue to provide my perspective. So for the channel, I would like to include a little bit more of hotel reviews. I yeah. know they don't get as many views, but... I don't think it matters so much because there are some people who value those videos. Yeah. Some people value that that kind of vlog style video. I know it won't get as many views, but these the people who are interested in that are people who are dedicated to the channel. Yeah. And those are people who really want to see the redemption, see what they can get from the redemption. So I'm trying to figure out a way to incorporate some of that. When I went to Vegas, I really didn't take any footage except the footage of my room simply yeah. because I didn't use points. But I can explain it like, hey, I spent X amount of dollars for this room, but it's going to cost you X amount of points. Yeah. So I want to include some more of that. I will be vlogging a bit of my trip when I do go in, in, in a couple months with my mom. She won't be on camera, but I'll use her yeah. as, a, as a camera woman. Hopefully she's nice. good. <laughs> yeah. But I think that'll be an interesting experience. Yes, I'm going to the same hotel again, but I'll be staying in a different type room. And I'll be actually venturing out from that property. Mm. So especially with some of the cultural things that will be happening at the time. So it'll be interesting. I don't want to expose too much because then people can kind of figure out when I'm going and yeah. I want people to follow me. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I think it's cool to hear your perspective on that too, because I think that is where the value really lies in YouTube. Like as a creator, you should be posting what you feel 
like posting, like what you find right. valuable, what you enjoy filming, mm-hmm. like like travel vlogs, for example, just for the buzzword, but right, right. whatever you're doing, just filming your travels. Like, I think that's awesome. That's part of what I've done on my channel with like my redemptions and stuff. I try to like have a whole section on each redemption about like what I did. Like I, I'll probably talk about this trip and be like, you know, I went to CJ's place, talked to him for a couple hours. Like I want to include all of that because that's mm-hmm. what I find, you know, yeah. valuable and fun to talk about. Mm-hmm. So I like that approach to it because we do know that those videos are probably going to get less views. But at the end of the day, if you're not putting your own personality, putting your own right. perspective, then you're kind of just going back to those like stimulus videos, right? Where it's like, yep. it could be replicated, but you right. can't replicate your experience, you know, exactly. in the Bahamas or anything. So exactly, I like that. And, uh, you know, as for the, the numerical goals, I think if you just keep doing what you enjoy, like you said, it doesn't really matter, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do like having those like actual number goals in mind because yeah. it helps it. Because it gives you something to work for. Again, that's what I, that's how I started YouTube is like, 1,000 subscribers, yeah. 4,000 watch hours. And I was able to do it. And after I did it, I didn't really have much of a goal after that. So although I stopped because I was burnt out, it was easier to stop because I'm like, I already hit my goal. Like, yeah. I don't know what else I want to do. Hmm. So I still need to have those numerical goals. So it's still have something to work for. It's more in the background than anything. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Right. But it's definitely like it. I guess it just showcases growth to me and show that, you know what, my channel is still growing. I'm still putting in the work. People are still interested. Yeah. So I guess that's the the bottom line with trying to have that goal and trying to achieve that goal. Gotcha. And then as for the distinction between doing YouTube as strictly like a hobby versus as a business or like wanting to take it full time, mm-hmm. where do you fall on that, that spectrum? So I would definitely, definitely like to take it full time one day. Um, we'll see what happens. Okay. I have my... For me personally, I at least have a year and I should be a little, just my coworkers don't know about my channel, but they yeah. may find it one day, but I at least have a year. There's something in my job where you need to, yeah. they'll, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Right. But um, if it does get to that point, because I see the value in it, I have no problem doing like sponsored content once it's good, right. and once it's something that's decent and it's a business, man. Yeah. If I have to do sponsored content to be able to take more trips and whatever, finance a channel, got to do what I got to do. And yeah. It's okay. But just the value at being able to have that freedom because you're able to travel around, right, right, as your wallet allows you to do so or your points allows you to do so. With me, I have to request vacation right. time and make sure it's okay. Like, even sitting here recording this video, it's a, okay, I got to do X, Y, Z. Let me see if I can fit Spencer into right. my schedule. It, it, it would just make things so much easier if I am able to go ahead and do it full time. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I have my career, yeah. but definitely going to work to try to make that come into fruition. Yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. Because, yeah, everybody has a different perspective on that. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like I just talked to Chad. I've talked to Stan about it. They're both on that very much just hobby mentality. Mm-hmm. They love their full time jobs. They'll just keep doing that. And granted, I think you do love your job, but you see that there are other opportunities. Um, and then obviously you have people like me or like Chase, Yokoyama. We're all doing it full time now. Right. And it's just, there is just so many ways to be successful on YouTube and it doesn't have to be defined by the money or the subscriber count yep. or anything. And that's what I find cool. But, you know, obviously for anybody that's not subscribed, you got to go subscribe to CJ now. Right. Absolutely. If you're unsubscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. Yeah. Coming over. You can always find his channel as the first comment on each of my... <laughs> the, the first stop. It's always yeah. first. It's usually one of the newest comments. So, or yeah. you can do a, go do newest and scroll down to the bottom. It'll be somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Somewhere around there. But, but yeah, for sure. Um, full time would be interesting. Yeah. It, it doesn't fit my personality really because I'm such a careful, cautious person. Yeah. And obviously I don't know what can happen when I'm full time. Like full time, like it's all on me and I absolutely have to do it. And I would. Yeah. I work hard. So I obviously would, but it's the unknown. When you have a job and you have that regular paycheck coming in, you know what that paycheck is. It, right. It is what it is. But we'll see. As a small YouTuber, it's fun. Yeah. Because I can just do what I want to do pretty yeah, much. Exactly. So I, I will be dabbling into sponsored content pretty soon. I actually have something I need to get out. Nice. <laughs> like within the next week. So we'll see. It's a, I think that card, I won't mention it, but I think that is a, it's an interest, very interesting card. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. And I'll see how I like that process. So I'm doing it really to get my feet wet with the sponsor um, process. And so far it's, oh, okay, this is how it works. Yeah, so. it definitely, it at the sponsorship side of things, especially me doing it full time, it's a big part of my income. I need it to fund the channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a different process. It almost feels like you're working for somebody in a sense, but Bingo. you have to kind of find those people that you find the least friction with, you know, right. so that you can just keep working with them. And 
Right. That's what I've found with my channel sponsors so far, and hopefully that keeps up. But we'll see. It's all yeah. part of the fun. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah. So, but it's cool. I like being able to get free wallets, though. Yeah. I haven't gotten any more, but I realized I can get another set, but I haven't done it yet. Yeah. One of my travel bags is also sponsored. It's from them as well. So yeah, you can, yeah, you can do some cool stuff with it and it's a cool job, but it is very much a, you have to put all the responsibility on yourself and then mm -hmm. the freedom is great, but also it's like, I mean, I find myself, find myself filling my time up as is, and then I'm working more than I did at a full-time job before. So it's like, that wasn't the goal, but right. That's the business. Yeah. That's how it is when you're a business owner. If you want to take your business to the next level, you, you absolutely have to put in that work. Like, right. and we've seen that like with Daniel Braun, oh my God, when he, when he started, <laughs> holy crap, this dude, I remember, I think he was doing one video a week, if I'm remembering at first. Yeah. And then he increased it to like two videos two, yeah. per week. I was like, how the heck is this dude doing this? Cause he was working at that time. Yeah. And I'm here, I'm working and I'm like, <laughs> I can barely do one per yeah. week, still can barely do one per week. And like, how in the world is this guy doing this? And then when he announced he's going full time, I was like, thank God, because I don't know how long you've been able to keep that up. Oh, I could never have done two a week during having work. That's why I started doing two a week once I took it full time. Right. That was the only way I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. But his stuff is, I mean, incredibly impressive. I know he just posted a new income breakdown, which I want to watch. But Me too. It's, it's, it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Life is busy. Yeah. Oh, whatever. It is. But I do appreciate you having me here once again. And I think everybody appreciates you coming on and talking with us today. And no problem. Do you have any places that other than your YouTube channel, people should go check you out? Obviously, they need to go there. But Well, no, I should. I'm probably going to be starting my TikTok soon. I know I'll have the same handle. I think I already signed up, but I haven't uploaded anything. It'll have the same handle. I've just been that YouTuber who's not embraced short content yeah. as yet. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like, it will be easier to edit. I mean, it's more fast paced. You have to do much more yeah. like animations and stuff in a shorter period of time. But I don't know, something about the short content doesn't mesh very well with me. I guess based on my answer, you can see I'm not very short with how yeah. I speak. So, well, that's, I mean, that's why I love the long form. I like talking about right. stuff for as long as I can. My videos are like 20 minutes on average, probably it's crazy, but, right. but yeah, so go check him out. Definitely on YouTube. Of course, that's all of our main platforms, but then his TikToks out. You got to check that out too. Team Rose Gold. Team Rose Gold. Versus the Team Classic Gold. But Team Rose Gold, man. I can't believe you got me with that. I'm very smart, by yeah. the way. I, I don't like to tell people that too often. <laughs> I just told everybody, but I'm very smart. And now everyone is going to be very careful of <laughs> yeah, totally. what I have to say nowadays from man. now on. <laughs> what a day this was. But yeah, thank you again for coming on today. Everybody go check him out. And as always, if you want to check out the other Creator Conversations episodes, you can click into that playlist wherever I put it. But CJ, thanks for coming. Thank you, man. Peace. All the way, I end every, every video with giving everyone a high five. So, oh, a first I have to give everyone a high five. I'll so, scoot over so we can put in the frame. Boom. <laughs> you come and get your high five too. Oh, no, wait, other camera. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. That's awesome. Sweet. Perfect, man.